All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook your PlayStation 5 controller up to your Windows PC using Steam's built-in drivers. So the first thing you got to do is make sure you've got your controller on hand and you've got Steam open and it is fully up to date. After you do that, go ahead and go to Steam and then click on Settings. Once you're inside of the settings, go to the sidebar here where it's got all these different option tabs and click on controller. And then you'll see a menu that looks like this. From here, you've got two options to connect your controller to your PC. You can plug it in. This is my recommendation. It can, it's the way to do it with the least amount of lag for when it's talking to your computer. And it'll also not run out of battery because it's plugged in. Uh, the other way is to connect it with Bluetooth, and if you want to do that, open up your Bluetooth settings on your Windows PC, and then on the front of the controller, you're going to press and hold on the PlayStation button icon in the center between the two joysticks, and the little pill-shaped button on the upper left-hand corner of the touchpad. Press and hold on those until the light ring in the front starts to Blink rapidly like you're at a disco dance club. Once it does, click on the Add Bluetooth or Other Devices button at the top of the Bluetooth window here. Make sure your Bluetooth is turned on. And then inside of here, there's a little pop-up. Click Bluetooth at the pop-up, and then it should show up as a wireless controller. Both the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 controllers show up as just a generic wireless controller, so it might be a little easy to confuse them. But once they're connected, you should get a bunch of little dings as Windows is like, hey, you've got a new device plugged in. Here it is, champ. We're getting it all set up for you. Once that happens, it should show up inside of your controller settings as PlayStation 5 controller. Or it might say something else if you gave it a fun, funky, wacky name in the past using Steam's big picture mode. And that's good. From here, there's only a couple settings that are really important. The first one is, do you want Game Rumble? You can go here to the device testing input section to test if all the buttons and stuff work. You can see them light up and move around in this picture. It'll also tell you if you have stick drift, but I do not. It's kind of nice to know if your controller is broken or if there's something else wrong that's software problem on your computer that's interfering with it. You can also play around with the calibration down here by clicking open. But the main setting that's going to control a lot of the behavioral things with your PlayStation 5 controller is the PlayStation controller support option. There's three options in this pull down menu. There's not enabled, partially enabled or fully enabled. Not enabled is going to treat this like a generic USB controller. It will not do anything fancy PlayStation related. It'll show up as an Xbox controller in Steam because the Steam inputs will convert everything it does into Xbox buttons. Enabled with partial support will recognize this as a PlayStation controller, so only games with really good PlayStation support will properly utilize all the functionality of this controller and display PlayStation buttons. Although most of them will still not allow you to use your gyroscope, touchpad, or any fancy extra back buttons or adaptive triggers. Fully enabled is going to treat this like a full-fledged PlayStation 5 controller. You can use the gyroscope. You can use the PlayStation buttons, which will be displayed on the screen. You'll be able to use the adaptive triggers and also the touchpad. If you find that enabling full support or partial support are breaking certain games or they're not working correctly, Disable this or turn it to not enabled. A lot of times enabled or not enabled are going to end up being the option that you end up having to use for certain games, especially older ones. Beyond that, you can do things like turn off guide buttons for cords for controllers. I'm not 100% sure what that does. You can turn guide buttons focuses steam off here. And you can play with enabling the Steam input for generic controllers and Switch controllers here as well, but this is a PlayStation 5 controller, so you probably don't need to do that. I don't recommend using the idle gamepad option because when you turn this on, like if you stop using your controller for like two hours, it'll turn off to conserve battery. 
The problem is sometimes, depending on the controller, they'll go back to sleep and you won't be able to get them to wake up until you restart your computer or reconnect the controller, which is annoying. Um, beyond that, if you find that there's some weirdness to how the button layout is for the desktop mode, you can go to desktop layout, click edit. And inside of here, you can play around with different layouts for the controls that are set up by different members of the Steam community from all over the world. So take a look in this list. One of these might work really well for you. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. It's really pretty straightforward. You connect the controller, you go in here and you tell it how much support you want for this controller. I would leave it at enabled in games without support or enabled. It works 90% of the time. I really haven't had much of a problem. Like to date, I haven't had to log back in here and tweak anything. But if you do find problems, you might have to tweak these settings and try the other two and see if that fixes your issue. So that'd be it for this one. Don't forget to do the like and subscribe thing, and I'll catch you later. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.